Namaste, and welcome to another episode of the Vijar Mantan Sustainable Narratives Podcast. Quite excited today to introduce you to yet another panel discussion in the civics vertical at this year's conference. And in particular, this panel discussion is called the Family Unit. Now, we all belong to a family of sorts. The world is now ever changing with new thoughts from the West about liberalism uh, and the way in which the family construct is put together. There are other Eastern concepts that keep the family united over many generations through a lineage of tradition and culture. Uh, today, we are speaking to Anilji Astana, who is a medical specialist uh, and has some particular interests around this field. And just a call out to everyone that hasn't registered yet. For the Sustainable Narratives Conference 2022, you need to go to vijarmantham.org and register for your ticket. It is an exclusive event, so you do need to register in advance. Uh, Anilji, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much, Namaste to everyone and all the listeners. Thank you so much for joining us here today. So we're, we're talking about civics. Uh, and before we sort of get into the detail of the actual discussion you'll be hosting, could you help me understand why something like civics is important for us as a society as a whole like how does it help our benefit or our flourishing yeah so very uh deep question and uh, something we can talk about for quite a while now we always talk about some philosophical aspects of society the politics economics and so forth but civics is essentially the foundation it's the building unit to society and we have found often we do not give enough attention to that subunit of society. We'll talk about all of the other important parts as well, but civic is just as important. So family, as you have said, the family unit is just one component of talking about civics and the vertical uh, discussion point, but it forms the very foundation on which society is formed. So if we do not address that head on, in as you have said in your introduction, with the evolving influence of technology and affluence and the changing demographics it's not the problems of civics are not going to solve itself so i think it's a very important stream to address uh, totally and with with something like civics it seems like the onus is very much on the individual what what as a as a construct as a society as a network of people can we do to help influence that because i i don't believe people are uh, the best best resource to use to help themselves grow forward i think humans find it very difficult generally to to get on um is it someone's responsibility or do we have to come together is it cohesion yeah uh in my opinion social cohesion is dependent not on an individual alone but okay. we need to remember that the individual has a duty towards sure. themselves and towards society now um, in our dharma, we've obviously got the concept of Vasudeva Kutumbakam, where mm -hmm. the whole world is a family. But very often, Sumiji, and I'm going to be uh, devil's advocate here, we, we, we are very good at throwing terms and principles. Very rarely uh, are we able to accurately apply it in you know, practical life and try and apply it as a solution to a problem. So I think part of this Vijayamantan discussion is absolutely taking this head on, but also tackling the more difficult questions when it comes to family and civic life, um, which we come across all the time. Sometimes it's very disjointed. We've got dharmic principles. Um, we know what ought to be done. But then in reality, when we're actually experiencing life, it's different. Um, sometimes it goes out the window. How do we amalgamate the two? That's part For of sure. it. Great, great, great point. And I think that's one of the premises of, of Vichar Mantan itself. Um, and so for anyone that doesn't know that the, the word Vichar uh, means sort of like ideas and thoughts and the Mantan is the churning of those. So here we are on a, on a global platform looking to understand civic nature, how we as humans interact, how what our duties, our rights, our responsibilities are to one another, to society itself, uh, and how or, or whether that is for the flourishing of society, are we growing? And, and I think at a global level, that's quite difficult to do, because as you say, there's sort of cultural ways of doing things, there's, there's nomadic ways, there's normality, there's reality, and that's quite challenging. In fact, I, I remember an event we did a few years ago here at Vichar Mantan called Elderly Who Cares? And it was talking about the growing population, what, what happens with our elders, whose responsibility they are, 
when they can no longer look after themselves or they've, they've got to an age now and sort of at least i can reference from my perspective i remember my uh, daddy ma living with us when she was unable to care for herself for many years and it was almost like our responsibility and then there's a there's a fine line where actually are we capable or do we have the ability to and then at least here in the uk there's a growing number of elderly homes and there's a tradition actually i think with um uh, some of my white friends where n by natural order they will go and live in a, in a care home and so there's the, the constant tussle like you said between real life and, and what it is and that's just sort of the elderly what about the the youth and the children and whose responsibility is to grow our children and who builds a character in those and i know that we've covered various topics of that degree um, on Vijar Month and before. So, uh, Anuji, like, we're very happy to have you chairing this session and you've got some a fantastic lineup of speakers to, to help help you month in it out. Um, what's, what's maybe one thing or something in particular that our listeners at home should be thinking about when they're coming to attend this panel discussion? Yeah. So we've got three fantastic speakers. We've got Dr. Tony Sewell. He's an expert in education and social mobility. And more importantly, he was a chairperson of the Racial and Ethnic Disparities Commission. He worked with the government. So he's got a very unique perspective on society and family unit in the context of cultural factors, demographic factors. You know, he's got a really good insight into the black british community the asian community and what which factors may affect what when it comes to social cohesion and family cohesion we've got dr jani who is an adolescent and adult psychiatrist and we cannot divorce the psychological aspect um, of raising a family of being part of a family and the individual so she will shed light on that and lastly we've got professor pike who is an academic in family psychology and relationships now really you a person can see family i mean the discussion point really is is this the era of end of the family if you look mm -hmm. at traditional philosophers western philosophers you know plateau and even marx you know they had advocated there's no relevance you know let it's an egalitarian society we don't need to have this really cohesive family unit we then look at our dharmic philosophy of a family and it's almost you could say it's like a nation unto itself the family mm. you know it's a self-sustainable system and there's no better topic to discuss such as this in vijar Manten about sustainable narratives because one thing that we are lacking when it comes to family and civic life is sustainability. Um, like yourself, Sumaji, I'm born and raised in the UK. My daddy stayed with me and my dad looked after her dementia, but after a while he simply couldn't. And mm -hmm. so she went to an elderly home in Wembley and it was the best decision for her. She would, she loved it, you know, because there was that cultural environment, but mm -hmm. it took a lot of effort on my father to understand, okay, you know, I have to give up in the best interest of her, of his mother. Secondly, I myself have three boys, you know, nine, six, and four. Um, and my wife and I, we have lots of manthan about parenting um, because no one sat us down when we had kids and said, okay, these are the things you should be thinking about. But I know some G, my colleagues, some of them are like, I'm too busy to have kids. I don't mm -hmm. have time. Uh, mm -hmm. They're too expensive. You know, I, I don't have the money to send them to this school and that. Whereas I'm currently residing in Australia. It's not uncommon for Australians to have three to four kids, really common. And it is not seen as a burden. And mm. I remember when we had three children, our, uh, some comments from our Samaj were, oh, you've got a football team just with mm. three kids. And I'm like, buddy, we're age short of a football team. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was very interesting, that cultural perspective of how mm. people now see family. You know, in our parents' generation, it was almost a duty you put the family first mm. and you were part of it your identity was not individualistic nowadays it's really like okay hang on am i sorted as an individual am i ready what does that even mean am i ready you're never ready mm. <laughs> right and that's, that's just my, yeah so. that's some great points um a lot of my some of my friends now are starting to have children their first child one or two are onto their second child and i can see the paradigm shift in them in terms of responsibility and and, and the tussle been between trying to sort of live an old life that they used to and sort of going out and drinking or whatever i don't know uh, and then sort of responsibility you have and then 
the football team definition is is brilliant too because historically i think at, at least from my ancestry there were lots of children my mom is one of 10 yep. right whereas now in this generation in this society is just my sister and i and there's yep. lots of people who are, are um um only chill only chill only child only children and then you, as you rightly say i have lots of colleagues who don't want children mm -hmm. because either it will curtail their career or it's yeah. very expensive yeah. or they don't see the value in bringing up uh, and and i i couldn't get my head around this for a long time i thought it was our fundamental duty to produce offspring mm -hmm. but as i sort of grown up and I've looked around for individuals it, they don't see it as their responsibility and that's fine i you know i i can um agree to that i am you know no expert in this field which is why we're having this debate but it's interesting to think how all these things are built up what the what the family unit consists of how important it is for society and i think as you mentioned some philosophers have said it's not needed it's not required i certainly see the value in it and not even just like blood relations either like what you call a family a society which you integrate with uh, for example, at my local Munda, there is a community of people who I would call family. And there's probably some uncles and aunties I don't see for maybe once a year. Yeah. But I know when I see them, I can rely on them. Or, or there's mentors in my life who I will only speak to once every six months. Yet there is that understanding. There, anyone that's trying to up and come into sort of the IT career, I see them as my younger brothers and sisters. I feel a duty towards them to help them. Yeah. And professionalize and, and become better uh, so so lots of ideas here uh energy thank you so much for helping us understand a little bit further about about civics about the family unit and about this panel discussion that you are hosting at the vichar month and sustainable narratives conference uh later this week <laughs> mm, not long not uh, long and the other thing i will say to all your listeners um is all of us will come across at some point in our life um this notion of having a family or not um, at some point, there's no right or wrong, but I think understanding the relevance and more importantly, society and family are not disunited. It's not families mm -hmm. here and societies there. You know, in our philosophy, dharma, you know, there's the grahasta. And in grahasta, your duty is to pour your sweat and blood and do your duty. And there's no harm and there's no sin, for example, in doing, you know, karma, artha, karma, moksha. You know, mm. some people think that, hang on, hang on, I need to devote my life to a higher cause. That's not a problem at all. But it's not for everyone in this phase of life. So we're going to touch upon some of these topics as well, because people do get a bit, uh, they have conflicting thoughts. Mm. Mm. It's the right path for me. And and it's it's trying to balance those out through nuanced conversation is, is where we're heading this. So uh, I know, G, listen, thank you so much for, for joining us here today and, and introducing us uh, to this vertical, to the panel discussion. I hope everyone at home uh, understands how, I, how this affects them, much like all of the verticals here. Uh, and so please do register. Please do go to vajaramanthan.org. And if you're interested in conversations like this, why not think about subscribing to the podcast? Uh, we are on Spotify, YouTube, Google podcast apple podcasts and your favorite streaming platform and a whole heap of other content that the jar month is producing there are book clubs there are papers there are other fireside conversations to be heard thank you very much again thank you to everyone who is listening and namaste mm -hmm.